Welcome back to this video of eVPN VXLAN management with IMC. As we introduced the lab topology, let's move now to the CLI to check initial configuration of this demonstration. So let's dive now to leaf 1. There are some um, configuration that is pre-staged, um, obviously to access the equipment. Uh, as a VPN for network management, but there is not that much. You will see OSPF process that is configured and we'll check the peering. No L2 VPN is configured at this stage. Uh, we keep uh, the, as much as possible a default configuration for this lab. So uh, some interfaces are configured to access the spine. Please note that here we do not use IP address on that interconnectivity, layer 3 interconnectivity with the spine. Uh, instead, we will use the loopback address for any control plane messages. And uh, that's pretty much it. The access uh, uh, port for the virtual machine, for instance, is not yet part of any uh, service instance. And there is no BGP configured and no L2 VPN. So if I do a display OSPF peer, you'll see that I prepare for uh, to gain some time in this video. I already prepare OSPF uh, peering. And if I do display IP routing table, I will have some OSPF routes to reach the loopback addresses of leaf 2, for instance. And uh, that would be the same for leaf 2, so I'm not going to leaf 2, but let's go to spine 1 instead. So on spine 1, as you see, there is no VRF configured neighbor. Um, we have OSPF configured, so and the interfaces to the leaf, so leaf one and leaf two. BGP, BGP is not configured. Okay, if I do a display OSPF peer, I've got my two peerings to um, the um, the leaf and display IP route. You see uh, my global routing table has those loopback addresses in uh, uh, directly connected because uh, again using uh, the loopback addresses for control plane communication. So that's uh, that's it for the, the the basic configuration of my initial test lab. Something to add is that netconf has been pre-configured as well in order for IMC. To, uh, to to get access and to configure um, uh, the the switch through netconf so this is uh, this was done before so let's start now uh, some uh, l2 vpn capability on the equipment so l2 vpn enable uh, i don't have to do that on the spine because the spine will not um, get any service instance configuration for layer 2 access instead this will be leaf 2 so let's connect to leaf 2 and configure L2 VPN as well. Okay, now uh, let's go to IMC. So we reach a dashboard of, uh, of IMC. So uh, Nothing particular here, so let's go now to service, VXLAN management, and devices. So let's import uh, all the devices that are um, part of that setup, so the two lifts and the spine. So let's click on import, select device. Device view, switches, and then I will take leaf one, leaf two, and spine one. Okay.
so you'll see those devices imported and synchronization will occur as soon as uh, IMC finish to grab all the, the, the information from those devices. Let's configure now some global setting on those equipment. So for that I need to select them. So what I uh, definitely have to do is to uh, remove any capability to uh, do uh, data plane MAC address learning. So I will not enable the data plane uh, remote MAC address learning. And what I can do as well is to enable uh, any logging information due to MAC address change and learning. So that's global parameter that I can configure uh, on IMC. Okay, now let's um, go to, uh, for instance, the CLI of uh, the LEAF1 and we'll check that we have uh, VXLAN tunnel MAC learning disabled. Okay, this is exactly what uh, I, I try to, to get from that configuration. Now at this stage, uh, we can go into each uh, equipment to configure the VI. So I'm going to um, those uh, configuration tabs, so global setting that I just performed, VXLAN, we'll see attachment circuit, tunnel information, so uh, please consider that as this is uh, EVPN, tunnel will be automatically automatically created, so there is no need to configure any VXLAN tunnel. Um, VSI interface, remote MAC, that would be uh, remote MAC learn dynamically. Uh, VPN, uh, this is the VRF, we are going to get into that right now. VGP configuration. So let's go to the VRF configuration. So let me add uh, VRF tenant 1 and VRF tenant 2 uh, on leaf 1 and I will do the same on leaf 2. So my VPN instance name is VRF tenant 1. Root distinguisher I decide to have the loopback of leaf 1 colon 1. I can set two address family for that, so I will need obviously the VPN routes for uh, MAC address reachability and I need as well IPv4 family in order to leak the route up to the global VRF that I will define on the border gateway to reach internet for instance. So let's start with EVPN address family. I will take an easy one, let's say I want to import and export one one and I'll do the same for IPv4. Okay, so let's go with the second one. I will take the root distinguisher colon 2, 2, two as a root target, and same for IPv4. Okay, I'm done on leaf 1 for the VPN or VRF instance creation. Let's go to uh, leaf 2 to perform the same. Let's put as a root distinguisher the loopback of leaf 2 
colon 1 for tangent 1. So my two address family, AVPN and IPv4. And now do the same for tenant two. Again, loop back address and that one is column two. And my two address families for that tenant. Okay, so let's take a quick look on the CLI. So what happened, you see here that tenant one is configured and tenant two is configured on leaf one and that would be the same for leaf two on those two address families IPv4 and EVPN. So now, now let's move to the VXLAN part. So remember, in terms of uh, virtual service instance configuration, we have to configure the tenant 1 VSI on leaf 1, tenant 2 VSI on leaf 1, but on leaf 2 we have to configure tenant 1A, tenant 1B, because for tenant 1 we have two different layer 2 domains, two different subnets, and tenant 2 as well. So here we are on leaf 2, so let's create the VSI. So this is tenant 1A, the VXLAN uh, ID would be 10010 10 for that one. So here I propose to, uh, to do some uh, ARP caching on uh, every tenant so that the leaf can uh, use the cache information or previously uh, learn MAC address for an ARP request. Uh, we do not touch the default uh, flooding separation. Uh, we will see the rate limiting associated with uh, BUMS traffic. Uh, and then uh, we activate statistic on VSI. Uh, contrary to what we already done on the static VXLAN tunnel management, here we select EVPN. Okay, so now let's create tenant 1b the VNI ID uh, is going to be 10.0.11 I'm going to take the same parameters than before And now let's create tenant 2. The VNI is 10, 0, 20. Again, some parameters. Okay, let's take a look on leaf 2 CLI to see what it means. Here we are. You see the VSI that has been created with uh, EVPN encapsulation VXLAN, ARP separation for ARP caching, statistic enabled, the VNI ID that we configured and the VPN target that is set to auto in our case. So the very basic and simpler configuration. So let's move now to uh, the first leaf, leaf 1, to do exactly the same. 
I will configure tenant 1 and tenant 2. I've got only one uh, subnet per tenant, only one. So let's configure VNI and VSI information for these two tenants, only for one. One ten zero ten ten and two. Ten zero twenty Okay. Let's check on leaf one CLI. We have VSI tenant one with uh, configure parameters that I set on IMC and VSI tenant two. Okay, now let's move on to the layer 3 VSI interface. So on leaf 1, let's add the two layer 3 VSI interfaces. So I would like that to be distributed, so everything would be uh, distributed across all the leaves so that I can minimize east-west traffic going up, but stay local to the, uh, to the switches if possible interface type is a gateway VSI interface. The ID of that interface is for tenant 1, 9, 10. That's tenant 1, so this is the, b the binding uh, between the VSI and the uh, VS layer 3 VSI interface. Uh, I propose to enable local proxy ARP for everything that is on tenant 1 and not on tenant 2 to see the differences when we will get to the troubleshooting section. My instance is via tenant 1. Here I need to set the manually the local MAC address of my, um, my gateway. So I decided that to be 0, 01. 0, 0, 01 at the end. The IP address is 10.9.10.1. And this is a slash 24. Okay, let's do the same for the second distributed layer 3 VSI interface. That would be 920 for tenant 2. Tenant 2, I'm not going to set any uh, um, local pro um, proxy ARP. This is bonding for VPN tenant 2. And this time, my MAC address would be 02, 0001. IP address is 10.9.20.1. 24 as a mask. Okay, that being configured, successfully added, let's go to leaf one and see what has been added on the VSI configuration. You see now we've got the gateway VSI interface 910. And if I go to the layer three interfaces configuration, you see the, uh, the, bind, the binding to uh, VRF tenant one for that VSI uh, layer three interface with the MAC address that I set and with the proxy ARP enabled for that one and not for the second one. Let's proceed now with the same for tenant for leaf two. 
uh, with uh, interface 9, 10, 9, 11 and 9, 20. So this is tenant 1A. I will activate local proxy ARP. This is tenant 1. MAC address is uh, the same than on leaf 1. The purpose of the fact this is the same MAC address is if there is a vMotion of a virtual machine between leaf 1 and leaf 2, the virtual machine do not have to uh, resynchronize the new MAC address of the gateway as the MAC address would be the same. So same IP as a default gateway than on leaf one. So let's create now the layer three interface for uh, the, the subnet um, uh, for tenant one B. So that's a new MAC address and the default gateway is 10.9.11.1. So same MAC address then defined on leaf 1 for tenant 2 and same IP address. Okay, so let's take a look on leaf 2 CLI. You'll see the bounding from between the VSI tenant and the gateway, the layer 3 gateway. So tenant 1A it's 910, tenant 1B it's 911, tenant 2 it's 920. And let's see the interface configuration for layer 3, part of the VPN instance. 910 that's VF tenant 1, 911 that's VF tenant 1. This is 10 tenant but different subnets. It's 1099. 10 uh, 0 slash 24 for that one and 10 9 11 0 slash 24 for that one and uh, we have here the tenant 2 without proxy ARP so that's that's it for the, uh, the, the layer 3 VSI interface configuration that are distributed um, so the, the local MAC address for the layer 3 gateway is the same for all the leaf so now let's get to the BGP configuration and let's start with the BGP instance configuration. Let's create the BGP process. So we are going to use autonomous system, uh, private autonomous system 65001. 
Okay, so now let's uh, configure uh, some uh, peer group uh, for that uh, L2 VPN uh, address family. So for that, we take that on the system. The peer group, so this is the leaf2, so we, let's call that leaf spine. The peering address for the spine would be 10, 10, 150.183. Back interface is going to be my source interface for the peering. And that one is not a root reflector. Instead, the spine will be. Let's take a quick look on the leaf 2 CLI. So the BGP part is there. You'll see that uh, we have now uh, that uh, loopback for spine that is activated, enabled, inside the layer 2 VPN eVPN address family for BGP. So let's do the same now on leaf 1. And then we'll do spine uh, after. So this is the same autonomous system. We want that to be internal BGP. So the same, I'm selecting the loopback address of leaf1 to be the source IP for source IP address for communication for BGP. And I will activate root reflector on the spine, not on the leaf. Okay, so now let's go uh, quickly on the spine to complete that BGP configuration. So the peer group, I propose to name that uh, spine leaf. I need to put the leaf IP address. So leaf one, leaf two, I will use the loopback address as a source IP address for BGP peering. And this time, this one is root reflector. So let's have a, a quick look on spine one. BGP is now configured, 
you have two IP addresses enabled on uh, uh, for that peer group inside the L2 VPN eVPN address family, and this is uh, a root reflector. Let's have a look to see if we've got already some uh, peering and some route uh, being exchanged between those BGP uh, neighbors. So let's do a display BGP peer um, L2VPN eVPN. You'll see that there are some uh, prefixes, so the peering are up, there are some prefixes being exchanged. So let's see what we have as an eVPN route now. So display BGP, L2 VPN, EVPN. And you see that there are some uh, few routes actually um, that are exchanged, pr uh, mainly the uh, root type uh, 5 that are the IP address, and this is for the loopback of the equipment. So we are missing uh, all the, the, the layer 2 domains that we would like to get because we didn't yet uh, attach the, uh, the physical interface to the VSI. So let's proceed with that now. So on, uh, let's go back to LIF1. So the attachment circuit on LIF1 will be configured on interface 10.101. Okay, let's now uh, grab a service uh, instance uh, number. So I propose that we do 1001. The, uh, the, the encapsulation, uh, we have the choice between uh, no encapsulation or a tagging. So let's uh, shoot for the tagging. And because my ESX are connected to that as tagging information for that uh, virtual machine. So let's uh, create that one. and send for turn on two. Service ID, I propose 1002, and my VLAN is 920. Okay. As soon as I've got those uh, attachment circuits and physical interfaces connected to those uh, VSI, I should be able now to receive routes uh, on uh, on the equipment. So let's have a look at, for instance, LIF2. What LIF2 is seeing? Display BGP L2 VPN eVPN. And as you can see now, we've got uh, root type 2 information with MAC address and IP as my um, attachment circuit is up and I've got a cross connect to the physical interface uh, connected to my virtual machine. So this is uh, expected. So uh, let's continue uh, by um, having the cross connect uh, circuits being done on LIF2. To just uh, recap what we have on LIF2, we've got two um, attachment circuits to be made, one on uh, 10 gigabit uh, 101 and uh, to connect uh, tenant 1A and tenant 2, and on interface 10 gigabit 103 for tenant 1B. So let's move back to IMC to perform this. So let's go to the AC tab. Mm. 
So tenant one uh, A, then the service instance might be this one. The tagging is the same. Let's add tenant 2 VSI on the same physical port. And this time it's uh, 1002 for the service instance ID and VLAN ID is the same than before for the leaf one. For tenant 1B, I'm going to use uh, an access port type of circuit, so the encapsulation would be Ethernet and the service instance used here would be 1003 and that's on one 10 gigabit 103 for tenant 1B. Okay, let's take a look now on what leaf one is uh, seeing. Uh, you can see uh, information of uh, root type two being exchanged as well. One point to note at this stage is the, the fact that uh, the layer 3 VNI has not been set up so that the routes are not completely exchanged in order to have inter BXLAN routing. So for that, uh, let's get to the creation of the layer 3 VNI interface on LEAF1 and LEAF2. So uh, let's go to VSI interface. So I'm on Leaf 2 here. I'm going to use Layer 3 VNI interface. Interface ID, I can take this VPN instance VF tenant 1. So that would be. 50,001 as I defined earlier in my topology. Okay, now we have to number two, 50,002. I can set as well the, the one that has been that will be used for uh, intertenant communication. So that would be let's say five eleven. So let's do the same now on leaf one. So that's for 
that's for VRF tenant one intervix line routing. So let's do it for intervix line routing for VRF two. Let's do it for intertenant communication. So this is there is no VPN instance here. Okay. We'll see later on uh, what we do on the spine, but now immediately we should be able to check that uh, I have more uh, routes on leaf one. You see now that I've got uh, root distinguisher uh, that are for tenant 1A and tenant 1B. Uh, that was uh, not the case before. So we've got uh, much more routes thanks to the inter VXLAN routing that we have now. Let's uh, stop at this stage this uh, configuration uh, part with IMC. Um, in the next video, we are going to see troubleshooting command in the CLI. Um, in meanwhile, we are going to perform some traffic tests to see um, what is accessible from which VM to another VM and uh, see how we can reach uh, internet by uh, tuning the spine route leakage. Thank you for your attention.